presence of the Lord. Uh, welcome all of us. Welcome, welcome members of Rebuilders Pentecostal Church, those who are watching at home. Our friends who are following us on Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, and uh, those who are listening to us online. We want to thank God for giving us an opportunity again just to hear his word. The Lord is in control no matter what is happening. He has not left this place. He remains to be God. Amen. And therefore we need to continue trusting the Lord. Amen. I want us to open our Bibles briefly to the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter number one. I'll read a few, a few verses, then we, uh, we will pray, and the Lord will speak to us briefly, and uh, he will take all the glory. Amen. I want to read from verse three, Ruth chapter one, verse three. The Bible says, Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her, and her two sons. Exalt his name now they took wives the of the Lord women of Moab. The, the name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other they was Ruth. To him and, and they dwelled there, there about ten years. Then both Malion and Kilion also died. And so the woman survived her two sons trouble. with her husband. The then the she rose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord has visited his people by giving them bread. Therefore she went out from the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two sons, to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, and you have, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. So she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and would also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? They were grown. Would you restrain yourself from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that, and, that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to our gods. That God... It is its small G, returning after, return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried, and the Lord, the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. Our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we are grateful this morning that you brought us to your house. You have given us an opportunity to share your word during these dark days. When people are afflicted and suffering, Father, like you did to the children of Israel, this is our prayer. The Lord, you will send your word, and your word will heal us. 
Your word will deliver us from our afflictions. Your word will bring hope to every hopeless situation. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for those who are following us online. Even for those who are seated as we stream this message, our Father. I pray that you will speak to us. You will visit us. You will heal your people. Even those who are under my voice, I speak blessing upon them. May your word touch them wherever they are. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. I am sharing briefly because of time on a message I've entitled, Hope That Does Not Disappoint. Hope That Does Not Disappoint. Hallelujah. Here is a story, I've read a story from the book of Ruth. Mostly when we hear this story, this story is normally told in weddings. Hallelujah. But I want us to look at this story and bring it to our, to our situation today. Hallelujah. The Bible talks of this family. The family of this man by the name Elimelech. Who was the husband of Naomi. And the Bible says that this woman had two sons. Malon and Kilion. And the Bible says. And they moved from their land. Bethlehem. The meaning of Bethlehem is house of bread. Hallelujah. They live from their place, from their land. They went to another land because of famine. You know when you did to, when you, what you need to understand is that famine are seasons that you go through. Today, people are facing famine. When we talk of famine, we don't talk of food. But people out there are suffering because their business are no longer productive. People have, been lo they have lost their jobs. People have lost opportunities. And therefore, this morning, you could be watching us and you are going through a situation where you are saying, I am no longer productive. Corona thing has affected livelihood. Corona thing has affected nations. And we are here saying, we need to hold on God, church. We need to raise our faith and trust upon God. You don't need to leave your place. You don't need to leave, you don't need to leave uh, your place of sufficiency. The Bible says that the Lord is our sufficiency. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I am here this morning to give you hope that does not disappoint. Hallelujah. These men left their place, going for another place, going to another place more up because they heard that Bethlehem at that given time there was famine. But then they heard that there is another nation, another place where there was food. They went to that land, they left their land, the land of bread, the house of bread, they went to Moab. And when they went to that city, when they went to that town, when they went to that land, something happened. Death struck this family. Praise the Lord. Naomi lost her husband. Not only her husband, but later she also lost her sons. And she was left with her daughters-in-law. And then in that same situation, she got a report that Bethlehem, there was bread. And it was a season of harvesting barley. And they, she decided to go back to her place. Bethlehem, the house of bread. Praise the name of the Lord. What am I telling you this morning, church? I am saying that we have God. Jesus is the bread of life. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, just remain in him. 
Are you thirsty out there? I'm here to tell you, he is the water of life. Are you broke and in want? Don't worry. The Bible says that silver and gold belongs to him. Praise the name of the Lord. Then Naomi talked to her daughters-in-law. She told them, you need to go back to your people. You need to return back. My daughters, go back to your people. She was telling them, are there still sons in my hope that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, I am too old to have a husband. I am no longer productive. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. The Bible says, then they lifted up their voices and wept. Again, Opa kissed a mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. She said, I will not leave you. You are looking at your life, at yourself, and there is no hope. But as for me, I see hope in you. There is hope, church, today. In that hopeless situation, I'm here to tell you that there is hope. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 14, verse 7, the Bible says, at least there is hope of a tree that is cut down. And if there is hope of a tree that is cut down, there is hope for you, child of God. There is hope for you. Do not give up. Do not return back to the world. Hold on, God. Trust him because he is the hope of the church. He is the hope of our salvation. Glory be to Jesus. There is no famine in the life of a believer. I've just told you that famine has a season that we go through. Famine is temporal. It is not a permanent situation. When you read the scriptures in the book of Genesis chapter 26, the Bible says there was famine in the land. Besides the famine that was in the days of Abraham, even in the time of Isaac, in the days of Isaac there was famine. And the Lord was telling, this man was telling Isaac, do not go, stay right where you are. Do not go to the world. Do not go to Egypt. Church, we must hold on God. We must trust on him. My brother, don't sin because of the famine that you're going through. Just trust in the Lord because he is aware of your situation. He knows whatever that is happening. He is aware of what is happening at this given time. I am telling you and I prophesy under the authority in the word of God that revival is coming. The church will remain strong. We are unstoppable. Jesus spoke to Peter and told him because of the revelation of whom I am, I'm building my church upon a rock and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not worry church. This situation you see is temporal. The situation you see right now has an expiry date. Jesus is on the throne. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ruth said, I will go. I will not go. I will follow you. And treat me not to leave you or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Whatever, wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. You are my people, church. You mean a lot. You are my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You are my people. Where you are, I will be there. We must hold on the faith that we have in God. Hallelujah. And she continues and says, where you go, I will Go. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. 
and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. Hallelujah. Ruth looked at this woman, Naomi, and although Naomi was hopeless, she looked at her and saw hope. Hallelujah. Aka muangalia, akaona matumaini. Na akasema sikuachi. Nitaenenda na wewe. Watu wako watakuwa watu wangu. Mungu wako watakuwa mungu wangu. Mungu wako watakuwa mungu wangu. Hallelujah. Then they went, they left, and they came to the land of Bethlehem. And verse number 15, because of time. The Bible says, And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheep, and do not reproach her. Praise the Lord. Do not reproach her. Do not ashamed her. Do not disgrace her. Hallelujah. Also let grain from, from the bundles follow purposely for her. Purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her. The favor of the Lord. Naomi looked at, at herself and she had no hope. But Ruth looked at this mother-in-law and she saw up and she said, I'll go. I have seen something in you and I'll go with you. Praise the name of the Lord. When you read Genesis chapter number 30, as I finish, there's a story of Rachel. Hallelujah. In Leah. And Jacob, this man called Jacob worked for 14 years to have Rachel. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that God enclosed our womb. So you can imagine by the time Rachel was giving birth, Leah had 10 sons. Praise the Lord. Already Jacob had ten sons. But when Joseph was being born, I want to read that scripture. Genesis chapter number 30, verse number 22. The Bible says, Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. God will take away your reproach. Hallelujah. You are going to dream again. Hallelujah. You have not heard what I've said, church. I'm saying you are going to dream again. Your business will bear, will, will bear fruits. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, that then God remembered her, and God listened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son, and said, God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. May the Lord add to you another business idea. May the Lord add to you another opportunity. May the Lord add to you another, another children. He is a God of a second chance. He is a God of restoration. He is a God whose hope does not disappoint. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, as I finish, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. 
Are you there? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hope that does not disappoint. Our hope in God does not disappoint. Our trust in the Lord does not disappoint. We have hope in God. Hallelujah. Chapter 3, verse 5. The Bible says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. I say our sufficiency is in God. Trust upon the Lord. He is aware of whatever that is happening. The Bible says that blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Whose hope is in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Believe in God. Know that he's able. Possess the spirit that was behind this woman called Ruth. Today we read about her. Even in weddings. Because of the courage. Because of that trust. She believed in the mother-in-law. And said I will not leave you. You are looking at yourself today and you are telling us or you could be saying there is all, no hope in me. I am here to tell you that God will roll away your reproach. God will take away your shame. God will remember you like he did to Rachel. May the Lord remember you and give you a chance, another opportunity. May the Lord remember you and lift your business. May the Lord remember you and heal your family. The Lord is in control. Hope that does not disappoint. We have hope in this God. He doesn't disappoint. She said, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you will lodge, I will, I will lodge. What a hope that we have in God. The Bible says at least there is hope of a tree that is cut down. Mbaja kaimba imba kasema kuna matumaini ya mti hulio katwa. Kwa arufu ya maji utachipuka tena. Hallelujah. Huyu yesu ni maji ya uzima. Huyu yesu ni mkate wa uzima. Usitoke kwa kekaa hapo. Praise the name of the Lord. Because God is in control. Now, but to see, mommy. You are there, you are watching us. You could be saying, I have no hope. I want you to believe God. I want you to trust in God. We are not assuring you of what God is not able to do. We are telling you that God is able to do. God is able to heal your situation. God is able to restore your business. God is able to restore your health. You could be following us and you are hostilized. You are there without hope. You are there not knowing what to do. He is a way maker. He makes a way where, the, a way where there seems to be no way. I want you to believe God. You can touch, you may touch. Your gadget, you may touch the screen of whatever gadget you are using there and trust the Lord as we pray. God is telling us that there is hope that does not disappoint. We have hope in God. The Lord will come through for you. The Lord will remember you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your written word. Your word is your breath. I pray that this word will penetrate to the hearts of your people and cause healing. The Bible says in, in Psalms 107 that when the children of Israel were distressed, not knowing what to do, they cried unto you and you sent forth your word. And your word healed them and delivered them from their affliction. This morning in Jesus' name, I pray for our listeners. 
Pray that you may touch that brother. Pray that you may touch that sister. I pray that you may come through for that family. That business that has collapsed. Pray the Lord Almighty that you will give them an idea to dream again. You will restore their lives. We speak healing to every situation. We speak healing to their bodies right now. May the power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God, the Spirit of the Lord, the power that resurrected Christ from the dead, touch them wherever they are and bring healing in the name of Jesus. We declare hope. Jesus, you are the hope of the hopeless. Jesus, you are a way maker. Touch their lives. Thank you, Lord, for the family, uh, the family of the Pentecostal Church. We pray that you may visit your people. Remember your children. Remember your servants. Remember the dream team. Remember the couples. Remember our children, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we declare that you are the Lord. Yes, we pray. The way you remembered Rachel, I pray that you will remember somebody. And Lord, you had to us another blessing. Had unto us another opportunity. Even to come to church and worship you more than ever before. We thank you. We bless you. Take all the preeminence for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.